Thanks, Tim. Well, a new study finds women who take acetaminophen during pregnancy are more likely to have a hyperactive child. Joining us this morning to talk more about this research is Dr. Deborah Feldman from the Maternal Fetal Medicine Department at Hartford Hospital. First, when someone hears this, especially women who are pregnant, it's, it's quite alarming because acetaminophen has always been something that within certain doses, ha doses have been safe. Yeah, that's right. Um, we've always gone to acetaminophen or Tylenol as our go-to pain medication because it's been safe in pregnancy. So this, this study, you know, I'm sure generated a little bit of panic among pregnant women. But one, one thing that I would say is that it's one study. It showed a possible association between acetaminophen use in pregnancy and potential behavioral problems in ADHD in kids later on. Right. But it definitely did not show a cause-effect relationship. So I would urge um, patients not to panic and to discuss this with their doctors before they, you know, cease and desist all Tylenol use during pregnancy. Another thing about this study is that it, it didn't go over exact dosage that each, you know, person was taking, each woman was taking. And I, I believe that they were also self-reporting their child's hyperactivity. Correct. Those were two of the weaknesses of the study. Okay. The, the um, patients were given questionnaires about at 18 weeks and then 32 weeks about whether or not they took Tylenol. So it was a more of a yes or no. We okay. don't know anything about dosage. We don't know anything about frequency. Did they take it every day? Did they take more than they were, you know, instructed to? So there there are definitely guidelines for Tylenol use in pregnancy. We don't recommend more than 4,000 milligrams in a 24-hour period. Okay. Um, with regard to the self-reporting, the mothers filled out the questionnaires about the behavioral issues. So there always is a little bit of subjectivity. The, the, you know, the um, questionnaires that they used were validated, but it was parents filling it out. So again, the data is not you know, super strong, but it's always, you know, whenever there's a study reported on CNN, it always generates a lot of um, interest and, you know, anxiety among pregnant women. <laughs> right, exactly. If they aren't stressed enough, Exactly, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, one of the things is acetaminophen is also found in so many different products. It's, you know, in your stuff for sinuses yeah. or your colds, yeah. that type of thing. What should, I guess, pregnant women be looking out for when it comes to to those other medicine. What are the guidelines there? Well, I think every everyone needs to be aware of what they're taking, especially in pregnancy. So read the ingredients on the over-the-counter medicine that you're taking. Talk to your pharmacist, pharmacist, talk to your care provider. Make sure that you're not going over that guideline of 4,000 milligrams um, in a 24-hour period. All right. And, you know, what other medications, I guess, would pregnant women be wanting to avoid during pregnancy because there are certain things that you can take, certain things that sure. you can't take. That's a very good question. You know, with regard to pain medication, we recommend acetaminophen over ibuprofen for other reasons. Okay. We know ibuprofen can cause problems with fetuses, especially later in pregnancy. So in general, our recommendation is to avoid ibuprofen use unless it's directed by your physician. So we still feel that way. This study doesn't change that recommendation. Right. We still feel Tylenol is the safest of the two pain medications. There are a few medications out there that we recommend avoiding at all costs in pregnancy. That list is pretty small and would be discussed with the care provider. Is, are they things, again, like pain relievers, or are they in general, kind of not range. pain relievers? Okay. So in general, there are medications for specific diseases, okay. um, conditions, seizure disorders, things like that. And, you know, I think one thing... The, the shock of it all about, oh, now I saw this study, what do I do? It's that things seem to constantly be changing, or, or I shouldn't say changing, but new studies come out all the time. Should this just be an open conversation that a patient has with a doctor? Yes, definitely. Studies like this should not change practice management. Um, they should just raise questions and lead to more studies, which is exactly what we need in this area. All right. Thank you so much for You're breaking welcome. that all down for us. We really appreciate it. I know probably someone, people at home kind of going, whew, okay. Thanks <laughs> so. for having me.